everyone. I am excited for today's video. I'm glad you're here. And so it's going to be two things in one. I'm going to be answering some of the questions that you had for me. And then also I'm going to be share, going to be sharing a little bit about my birth story. So, um, my baby is sleeping currently and I hope that he's going to stay asleep, but, uh, I needed to film something for tomorrow. <laughs> I didn't have anything. So I figured I might as well quickly, um, film a sit down. So anyways, um, so I know a lot of you will be like, I would never ever share my birth story and put it out there. And I have been thinking about it a lot. And I asked Johnny also like, should I put it out there? Like, is it too personal or yeah. How I asked him how he felt about it. And he was like, it should be fine to share it. it. It's okay if you share it. So he felt okay with me sharing it. And I got thinking that all of us, every living person is being born the same way. Yeah, it might look different for some, uh, for all of us. Some might be born through C-sections. Some might be born through natural birth. Like everything is, every single one is going to be a little bit different. But in the end of the day, it's all the same, if you know what I mean. So I figured, you know what, I might as well share a little bit. I'm not going to go into too much detail. And that was, um, I got that question quite a lot. If I'm going to be sharing my birth story. And yeah, this is... I'm going to share it in this video a little bit, but I'm first off, I'm going to be answering a few other questions that you had for me. So, so one of you asked, will your family come to visit soon? They must be anxious to meet him. And I wish, I wish it is like kind of heartbreaking to have this sweet little baby and no one of your family can see it. Like you can only send pictures and the pictures look so different than, than it does in real life. And Sometimes it, it breaks my heart a little bit, but yeah, hopefully some of them can come out this year yet. It's all going to depend on paperwork and stuff. So we'll see. Um, we had Johnny's sister visit us from Alberta, which was really nice. So yeah, so I guess we'll see. Um, so one of you asked, how long were you back before you, um, before he was born back in Canada? Um, so we got back, okay, I had to think a little bit. We got back in the beginning of March, so about six weeks-ish. I know it was a little bit risky and we did want to come back earlier, but some uh, family situations and stuff, we decided to stay a little bit longer, but, um, but yeah, six-ish weeks that that we were back before he was born so and so uh one of on instagram someone said i'm gonna come to canada in august as a visitor is it easy to find a job in agriculture so this is might be more of a question for johnny but i would say yes especially in saskatchewan it's very easy to find a job although you would need to have experience like with tractors and like you would need to know what you're doing but if you do have experience, I would say it's very easy to find a job. Just go on Kijiji, you find lots and lots of farmers looking for work, uh, hired hands or workers. So it it's usually pretty easy to find a job. So on a farm somewhere. So <clears throat> yeah, a lot of you ask, are you planning on sharing your birth story? Um, did you have a good birth experience? I'll go with into that a little bit later um someone asked that you have a natural birth or c-section so i'll uh, i'll be answering those questions a little bit later um so and a few of you asked like someone said i find the name unique what made you decide on that name and someone else said how did you come up with his name so <laughs> his name that's um before we even knew that we were having a boy I came across this one reel on YouTube. I think it was a court video actually. And there was a mom with a little boy and the judge asked um, the mom, what's your little boy's name? And she said, Joe Myers. And instantly I screenshotted it and I was like, that is a beautiful name. I've never heard that name before. And what, and maybe it caught my attention because me and Johnny had talked about this before. We would like to name all our children uh, their name. We would like our children's names 
to all start with a J if possible. Just because our names are starting with a J, it would kind of be um, unique or interesting to have our children's names start with a J as well. So that is why it caught my my eye as well, I think. But also I really liked it. So I screenshotted it and I sent it to Johnny and I was like, if we're having a boy, we should name him this because I love that name. And at first he was not very on board. He was like, uh, I'm not sure. But then after we found out that we're having a boy, I asked him sometimes like, are we gonna name him Jemias? <clears throat> and I guess since we started talking about it more and more, he, he started really liking it as well. So that is where we came up with the name. And that is the only place that I've ever heard that name of. Uh, I have been going on Instagram or Facebook and there's not a ton of people that I can find with that name. So I guess it's not a very common name, but I really like it. I know it's not gonna be everybody's taste, but <laughs> we really like it, so. And then his middle name, Juan, um, that is, so, I don't know, we were, even, we were back in Canada and we didn't even have a middle name. And I started looking and I was like, if we could find a, a Bible name maybe, or even something that was um, kind of in a family, a family name or something. And I started thinking, you know what? Um, John is very common in our family. My dad is John. Uh, Johnny is John, whatever, Johnny John, same thing. Um, his grandpa was a John. And I was like, I don't want to name him John though, <laughs> just because there's a lot of Johns out there. And, and then I have a book where there's a lot of, sorry if this is annoying, put that pen away. I started looking in my book where I have lots of names and then under John, there was Juan, there was uh, Johnny, Johan, all the different names. And I was like, Juan, that would be perfect because me and Johnny are both born in Mexico and it's a Spanish name. And it's also, well, it's the same thing as John's, just in Spanish. And so that would be kind of a Bible name. It would also be a family name, kind of. Um, so yeah, that is how we decided to, to go with Quan. And it's also a very short name. So I'm not sure yet how, how difficult it's gonna be to pronounce that name here in Canada for people. I know uh, for me, it's not hard. It's Juan, like, <laughs> it's very easy, but I know for some, some people it might be a little bit different, so. But yeah, that is how we came up with the same. That was a long story, but anyways. So, um, someone asked, um, could you tell us what you craved during pregnancy? And I thought about this, and I didn't really have any specific things that I was craving really bad, but the only thing that I would say that really, like, was tasted better than ever was fruit and veggies. I just absolutely loved fruit and veggies. I don't know, they just tasted so, so good. And I must say after, like, I know I bought bought some fruits the other day and I was like, they don't just don't taste good. I don't know if it's because it's not a very fruity season in Canada or if it, if it really is because I was craving it a little bit and it just tasted extra good. I don't know, but I would say that's basically the only thing I, I don't think I had any extreme cravings, not that I can remember anyways. And I would probably remember if I had them right. So, so yeah. Um, okay. So my birth story, I will not go into too much detail. Um, yeah. And to a certain point it is personal, very personal. <laughs> But also, I really enjoy listening to birth stories and I like to hear people's experiences. And I would say, so my experience, it was not what I expected, but it was also not not this dramatic, um, uh, dramatic, terrible experience, if you know what I mean. So I would say it's somewhere in the middle. It was, it was not what I expected, but also it all worked out in the end. Um, nothing was wrong. Like everything worked out good. There was no emergencies. There was no um, trauma or anything like that. So um, my due date was on the 17th of April, which I know to some people I said it was on the 15th and that is because the first ultrasound, they said it was the 15th and then they changed it to the 17th later which sometimes happens. So uh, in my mind, I just kept it at the 15th, but 
on papers it was the 17th so which was on a Monday and I had a checkup that um, that morning and everything looked good and so I went home I took a long nap and did some things around the house and I was actually gonna film a video and show you guys a little bit how I prepared everything to get ready for the baby because I knew I wasn't gonna have I wasn't gonna have much help with um, food and stuff like that so I was gonna film that video and it was towards the end of the day and all of a sudden I just knew my water broke like instantly I knew this is this is my water breaking and I didn't have any pain I didn't have any contractions and I was so excited at that point I was like okay finally something is happening even though it was just my due date but I was waiting already so and I called Johnny and he was like, you know what, I'll, I'll come home and we're, we're gonna eat supper and then we're gonna go to a hospital. And so that's what we did. He came home, we ha I made supper, we cleaned up the house a little bit and we went to Regina. And I, I don't know if this is something that I completely missed, but I was so excited. I was like, oh yeah, my contractions are gonna start anytime soon. And I guess they could have but they didn't and at that point I didn't know that it's not like doctors really don't like to see your water breaking before you have any contractions and I didn't know that I was just excited <laughs> and so we walked around in some stores as long as we could and nothing really happened one contractions every once in a while but one contraction every once in a while but it was like I felt good and more towards like midnight uh, we decided you know we might as well go to a hospital get checked in and see what they say right and so we went in and they checked and confirmed yes my water had broke and I checked on on the baby and he was doing good and we waited another couple hours and nothing really happened so they confirmed that he was head down and and then finally they came in and said that the chances of my contractions starting by themselves were pretty slim because at that point it was already seven or eight hours after my water had broke and we were just waiting and waiting and nothing happened so they said that it's probably not going to start on their on on their own the contractions so they recommended me getting induced with very small amounts of Pitocin. They would start very uh, with a very very mild dosage and then slowly go up if needed and maybe that would trigger my body to start contracting and so but they said we could also wait longer if you wanted to but so the interesting thing was that night a snowstorm was rolling in and we didn't want to go home back home because we knew there was a snowstorm coming so we're like you know what we might as well do that because we have to stay here anyways because we're not going to risk being stuck at home in a snowstorm so with my water being broke so we decided to go ahead with that and so they started uh, with the Pitocin and right away my contractions started and they were super super painful like right from the beginning and very close together and that was I would say complete back labor because I didn't have any pain in my in my stomach it was all in the back and yeah, so that was more towards early morning-ish when they started that. And I labored like that for, I don't know how many hours, maybe six-ish, I don't know, something like that. And I, I was at the point where I got really, really tired and my body was just working really hard because I had very, very painful contractions and I had been up all night and at this point it was almost lunch noon ish and they came in and they said that they would recommend me getting something for pain if I wanted to it was totally up to me because I had my birth plan and I really wanted to go natural but yeah the nurse just said you know what I, I think it might not be a bad idea if you take something just because you're getting very tired and also uh, they had checked me two times and I didn't really dilate like it didn't really progress first they checked and I was two to three centimeters 
and then I checked a couple hours later and it was still the same. So she said that I still had hours to go and that um, she could see that I was getting very, very tired and she wanted me to really have the strength to get this baby out, right? So I we tried a few different things like the the oxygen, I don't know what it's called, but anyways, I tried that, but that it didn't really work and at that point they were so painful she said the next best thing would be the epidural but that was up to me if I wanted it or not but I was so out of it by that time I was like yes please so so I got the epidural which I was very very thankful for that it worked and it worked really well I didn't have any pain I could still feel my contractions a little bit but I didn't have any pain so I could rest a little bit but I, I couldn't fall asleep at all like I just couldn't I I don't know, my body was, I think, just working so hard that I just could not fall asleep. But yeah, and so a couple hours later, they checked me again and I was fully dilated, which was really encouraging. But at that point, they noticed that he was not in the right position. He was, um, he was sunny side up is the easy word. I know there's another uh, fancier word for that, but he was sunny side up. So basically his face was, was facing forward and it's supposed to face backwards in, in the stomach or whatever, in the pelvis. And anyways, so they, so the nurse was so, so very kind. She said that there was no point in really starting to, to get the, him out because it would take a very long time like this. So for, couple hours I did lots of different positions position changes and and we tried flipping him around and he just did not cooperate <laughs> he he did not want to turn around and that was not really good but yeah we tried we tried for a couple hours and it, nothing happened he just stayed the same way and yeah and then they recommended me starting to push and see if that would turn him around but that didn't work either so we just had to to get him out the way he wanted to come out <laughs> and that was sunny side up and it all worked out but if you know anything about births and maybe you have gone through it it's not easy it's it's a lot harder if if they're sunny side up so that part was not the best it was hard but um yeah, after 12 hours of labor and two and a half hours of pushing, he finally was born and he was healthy. He was, it was so worth it. Like when I hold him, uh, when I got to hold him for the first time, I was like, yeah, I know what they mean. It's worth it. <laughs> Even though I was so out of it, I was so extremely tired. I... I don't know how many doctors there were in the room. I don't know what the doctors looked like. I was just, my mind was sleeping, it felt like, and my eyes were open and I tried to get this baby out, but my mind was already sleeping or was somewhere else, I don't know. It was just weird, but, but yeah, I was very, very thankful for the epidural. Even though it was so different than I planned, I obviously didn't want to get induced. I didn't want the epidural and but it all worked out in the end and I'm very very thankful for that and I also had the sweetest nurse she was so patient the whole time that I could move around as much as I wanted to because I was on the IVs I was on the baby being monitored the whole time and also they monitored my contractions so it was difficult for me to move around because every time I would move the monitors would get out of place and and they really wanted to check on him, on him the whole time, see how he would react to the medications and stuff. So it was hard to move around, but she was so kind. She was like, just let me know if you need to move. I will readjust and you can move as much as you'd like, as much as you would need to. And so that was really, really nice. And uh, I know some of you had asked before if I didn't want to go with a midwife. And first I wanted to, but they weren't able to accept me because there's just not enough midwives in our area. So I didn't ha really have a choice other than to go with the hospital birth, which I can't complain. I think they, they did really well. I know some things might have looked a little bit different if I 
would have been able to have a midwife but also i was just i was just glad that they were so patient and kind and and i just had a good hospital birth experience and you know some people always say that they feel so anxious and and they can't relax in a hospital even though i couldn't fall asleep in the hospital really it wasn't that i didn't feel safe or that i didn't um feel relaxed i felt very much relaxed like in that way it was just um i don't know i guess my body just didn't want me to go <laughs> to sleep but uh yeah it all worked out in the end and yeah we are absolutely blessed with a beautiful baby boy and well obviously at this point he is a month old already which is so hard to believe but i've had so much fun with him and it is just a lot of fun to be a mom even though it is very challenging and especially for now for me to kind of see when I will fit in the filming and the editing because he needs to be held a lot and he needs a lot of attention and I know that will change in a little bit when he gets a little bit older but um, I really want to try to have a video up once a week but at this point I don't know if it's gonna be working out or not but he's my first priority I never want to um, want to neglect him or yeah he is first priority he is before YouTube so <laughs> anyways and so last Sunday uh, we went to church for the first time after he was born and it was just so much fun to get out of the house and he was such a good baby he slept almost a whole day and um, yeah and also we had the most perfect sermon ever that you could ever have for being there at church with your newborn. Um, it was for parents because it was on Mother's Day and it was for the parents, for both parents, more, more so, um, about that our children don't really care if we're a hero in other people's eyes. Um, they don't care if we're people pleasers, if we take lots and lots of time for other people and we just, we never have time for them. It's always about uh, pleasing other people and we can't say no to to anything they don't care about that in the end of the day what they care about is if we take time for the little things he had an example for uh, of um, let's see if I can <laughs> if I can tell this the way he did um, so what they care about is if we take time to look at at some flowers maybe outside or if we show them around and we're like this this is the name of this tree tree and this is an apple tree and and um, you know just the little things like just talk to them just take them out and and just spend time with them that's what they're that that's what they care about in the end of the day and I was like you know what I need to remind myself of that I know I'd like to have a video up once a week but in the end of the day he's not gonna care about that he is not going to remember if I will have a video up once a week. What he is going to remember is if his mom had time for him, if I have time for him when he needs me, if I have time for him when to play or to have to do activities and stuff like that. And so it was just so such a perfect sermon and or message. I was so, so grateful for that. But yeah, anyways. It's quite a long video, it seems like. I can see I already filmed almost half an hour, so I will see if I can have this edited for tomorrow. And yeah, hopefully I can have a video up next week. I have some ideas, I have some things that I wanna be want to film, so yeah, hopefully I can film them if he doesn't need me. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed it and hoping it inspired you in some ways. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.